Welcome to the Better Business, Better Life show. I'm your podcast host, Deborah Chantry-Taylor. In this podcast, I interview business owners, EOS implementers, and business experts who share with you their experiences, tips, and tools to help you create not only a better business, but also a better life. At the end of each show, you will have three tips or tools that our guests share that you can implement immediately into your life. If you want more information or want to get in contact, you can visit my website, debra.coach. That's D-E-B-R-A dot coach. Please enjoy the show. And today I am joined by Mike Capuzzi, who's here from Pennsylvania over in the US. And Mike has got a really interesting background. So he's a publisher, he's an author and a book publishing coach. And he's been helping clients create exceptional marketing results since 1998. He's actually an author of about 19 books himself, including two Amazon number one bestsellers, which is the 100 page book and the magic of short books. And he's now the founder of Bite Size Book, which is a whole new publishing concept formula for creating short, helpful books known as shooks. So shooks are kind of ideal for business owners, entrepreneurs, corporate leaders who are looking to increase a level of authority while also providing helpful information in bite sized books. So if you've ever wanted to share it or share, write and share a nonfiction book but weren't sure how to do it, you're going to love what Mike has to share today. Um, so that's that's the, the, the bio for Mike. Welcome to the show, Mike. Lovely to have you here. Um, what I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to say thank you, Deborah. Yeah, oh, absolute pleasure. And um, what was I found really interesting is Mike is actually an engineer by trade, so has come from a completely different background. And I just had a quick, um, quick chat with him before the show to find out, you know, what really is a shook, and what I've learned is that it is, yeah, short bite-sized pieces of information, but it's actually just one of those books you can read in about an hour, um, and it gives you really valuable information. But from a business owner's point of view, it also follows a formula um, to, to help you lead somebody down a direct response kind of mechanism. So that's what I've learned in the last few minutes. Uh, Mike, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Again, Deborah, thank you very much for this opportunity. Oh, absolutely great. Hey, so tell us a little bit about how does somebody who's an engineer <laughs> go from being an engineer, and I assume you worked in engineering for a while, into um, marketing books of all things? Yeah, it's, well, like, like most entrepreneurial paths, it's not this straight line. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I engineering degree and did that at a you know small engineering company for a number of years uh, here in Pennsylvania, and then I this is back in the early 1990s. I, I answered a, a classified ad in our local newspaper for a, a small software company that was engineering related, engineering software related. Got the job, and Deborah, that was sort of a one of the trajectory. You know, just took me off in a new direction. That little company, which was a technical development house, so all they did was coding. Someone else did the sales and marketing. Well, they had to start. They had, they had to assume the sales and marketing role after a couple of years of being there. So, they actually sent a little email out uh, back in the day um, and uh, said, "Hey, does anyone want to you know start this marketing department with us? And anybody have an interest?" I raised my hand, and you know. Ever since then, traveled the world, never got to New Zealand. Not, I almost got to Australia, but I got married instead. My, my uh. wife wouldn't, you know, the, the scheduled uh, trip was to Australia and it was when I was getting married. But um, traveled the world, spoke, you know, met a lot of folks and um, just a really cool ride. But I always had an entrepreneurial streak. So at the height of the dot-com bubble in the late 90s, I, I went off on my own and started my own consulting company. Wow, oh, fantastic. By the way, it's never too late to come to New Zealand, and I'm sure your wife would love it as well. <laughs> oh, I, 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 it's, it would definitely be a bucket list. Yeah. And look, I've got to be honest, I've, I've obviously spent 10 years living in Australia myself, so I have I have a British passport, I have an Australian passport, I have a New Zealand passport. Um, and New Zealand is very, very different to Australia, so it's definitely mm -hmm. worthwhile, worthwhile making the visit. Okay, so you had this entrepreneurial streak. You decided it was time to do something about it. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, I just, you know, always wanted to work for myself. Um, mm -hmm. Had that, I, I didn't play the corporate game very well. That little software company got very large. And when I left, I was employed in 57 when I joined it. When I left, they had thousands of employees. Wow. It got that big that fast. And, um, you know, it wasn't, once it started getting big, it wasn't sort of my cup of tea. But uh, went off, always wanted to go off and do my own thing. Was never that interested, and maybe in hindsight it was a mistake, was never that interested in building a big or small, you know, multi-employee company. There's four of us now in this little company. And um, just, you know, I, lean and mean, you know, I, I know what the, the theme of your podcast is, and I really believe that's a philosophy I believe in. You know, the business is really meant to be a tool for me. Um, 
and uh, I didn't I didn't want it to become an all consuming big kind of thing. So mm -hmm. intentionally small, but I love it and hard to believe we're you know, 25, 26 years into this. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that. That's fantastic. Okay. And so um, in terms of just before we get into the whole concept of a shook, let's have a little bit of an exploration about your journey. So so you went from being a one-man band, now you've got four people that you work with, um, and it's been 25, 26 years. Tell us a little bit about, um, you talked about being non-lineal. I think that business growth is also non-lineal. Tell us a little bit about that journey to get to where you are now. Yeah, I mean, dabbled in different things, so different focuses. I tend to get bored, typical entrepreneur. So when you when you run a small kind of lean ship, you know, like a speedboat, if you will, it's easy to sort of, you know, change and, and try different things. So we've been publishing, even though we published our first client book in 2008, we never really focused a lot of energy on it. Uh, it wasn't until 2018 where we went 100% behind publish book nonfiction book publishing for business owners. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've done a lot of things over the years. I used to host a bunch of events. I used to host a monthly in-person event for business owners to come visit. Uh, so I've done a lot of different things over the years. And uh, at this phase of my life, what we're doing now is it's the most fun and the most enjoyable for me. So, yeah. yeah. And I think it takes a bit of time sometimes to find that, doesn't it? So we were saying before we've gone on the podcast, I'm a biochemist by trade. Um, and I never really enjoyed biochemistry. It was just one of those things <laughs> that my parents thought I should do. And, you know, now I'm, I'm now 53. I think I've now actually found what I really, truly love doing. Um, there, You know, I'm here on a weekend um, because I love coming in and talking and meeting with people. I love the work that I do throughout the week. And, and I really do feel like I've mm -hmm. found my true niche um, and my why and, and, and it just makes life so much easier. But it does take a while to get there, right? Because um, sometimes you have to try things and, and work oh, yeah. out what works and what doesn't work. And, and, and you're like, you know, people change, right? Their mm -hmm. desires, like, you know, I see young people now. I'm even older than you are, Deborah. <laughs> and I see young folks and I'm, I admire them, how hungry they are. And I'm like, ah, been there, done that, right? Like, <laughs> uh, I'm not saying I'm ready to retire. But yeah. I'm also not ready to burn up the, the world and, 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 you know, yeah. do all the stuff I used to do. So it's, it, it's definitely an evolution. And I think that is, I try to encourage my daughters. I've got two college age daughters. I try to encourage them to really think about that. Like, um, you know, the decisions you make right now don't, you know, things are going to evolve and you need yeah. to be open to that evolution. Yeah. I think nothing's set in stone. I think business is the same too. It's like, that's why we have to review things every 90 days and kind of go, hey, what's working? What's not working? What should we be changing? Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about shooks. So what is, I mean, I described my version of a shook, but I'd love to hear what, how you describe it and who should write one. Yeah. So a little marketing lesson here. I think you'll appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously most of us as business owners, have some sort of competition. So there's a ton of people that help people publish books, for example. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of marketing consultants, coaches, et cetera. So it's always something I advise our clients. I've taught it, taught it for years with other things I've done. Is you you want to find that unique value promise, the unique selling proposition. You know, you've heard all these different things. How do you describe what you do uniquely? So we came up with a what we believe is a unique formula for these short one-hour read books. And much like here in the States, Deborah, there's a McDonald's and there's a Burger King and they both sell hamburgers, but one's got the Big Mac, one's got the Whopper. A Shook, a short, helpful book, is our brand of books. So we're the only one that publishes Shooks. And, you know, it was just a way to differentiate us. Uh, I'd say nine out of 10 people love the concept. And then there's that always one person like, oh, why would you come up with a stupid word like that? <laughs> but um, it's, it is our brand of short, helpful book that follows a very specific, as you mentioned, direct response formula. Mm. And so who, who should write one? I mean, it's all, you know, it's great having this so, idea. But yeah. Well, yeah. We, <laughs> right. I could make the case, Deborah, even though we haven't done it, I could make the case that just about any business owner, any entrepreneur or any corporate leader ought to have a short, helpful book working for them, including like a restaurateur, a, a pizza shop owner. I really believe, it. I think there is an opportunity there. We haven't worked with a pizza shop owner yet, <laughs> but we only work, we only do nonfiction books that are meant to be sales tools, really, these little books that we create. Mm -hmm. And we're only helping, probably two thirds of our clients, Deborah, are what we call local business owners, your local physician, your local dentist, your local insurance agent, for example, chiropractor. 
And then about a third of our clients are folks like you and I that have a, a worldwide audience and, and more of a global reach. Hmm. Okay. And so um, <laughs> I'm trying to get my head around how a dentist or someone like that actually writes a book and what the book would be about. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell you, we have several dentist clients. Okay. Uh, we just, matter of fact, our most recent book, which just went live this week, is from an orthopedic uh, or, or, uh, orthopedic surgeon. An or yes. Wow. <laughs> I can't get it out. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I, I, so, shattered, I shattered my pelvis a few years ago, actually, many, many years ago now on a horse, shattered my pelvis and broke a couple of ribs and so I had an orthopedic surgeon. And I, I must admit, they are, you know, they're truly specialized in terms of what they do. So well, what on earth do they write about? <laughs> his book is about osteoporosis. Ah, okay. Right? And his natural path of helping osteo people suffering from osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. So it's a short, I'm looking at it. We it just published, uh, you know, in the last week or so. And, um, but dentists, we had, here's a very interesting story, Deborah. So we've done several dentist books. We always, again, advise, just like I was telling about the Shooks and coming up with what we call your special sauce. Like, what do you do that's different? One of our original clients who happened to be a long-term client of ours, so it was very natural for him to start working with us to publish a book. He is um, more of a natural oriented dentist. So they don't, he doesn't use fluoride. He doesn't use mercury, which is a lot of, you know, most mm -hmm. dot dentists do. Yep. Uh, very homeopathic type of dentist. And he wrote a short book. It's called Are Your Teeth Toxic? And if, you know, his belief was, and I read the book and worked with him, and I believe it too, <laughs> that those silver amalgams that are in your teeth that a lot of dentists still put in are dangerous to your health because mm -hmm. of the mercury. So his book was called Are Your Teeth Toxic? And in it, he made a very good case why he believes anyone who has a silver amalgam in their mouth should have it removed. Wow. So that's how one dentist yeah. used a short, helpful book. Okay, so it's all about um, kind of it's it's marketing one on one, right? So finding out what your special source is, and then writing a book that kind of positions you in terms of being the the expert in that special source. Right, right. Love and the, and these books, Deborah, really just for the listener, I mean, again, these aren't meant to be New York Times bestsellers. These mm -hmm. are sales tools. They are essentially business cards on steroids, if you will. Yeah. I don't want to diminish it by making it sound like a business card, but it's yeah. it's meant to be a sales tool that you give away. You don't try to sell these. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you give them away online, offline, to ideal prospects. And that, in turn, can really help you create some really nice uh, client flow, customer flow. Perfect. Um, and that's what I was thinking. It is it's like a, a business card, but with a whole lot of um, useful information for the reader yeah. so that they, um, they, they, they get some value from it, uh, but it's introducing them to you. And I suppose a little bit like I, I always thought that videos were really great because if you put videos out into the marketplace and people watch them, I, I get people who've never met me before, but when they actually meet me for the yeah. first time, they go, oh, I feel like I know you because they've actually seen that. I'm guessing the Shook has the same kind of um, concept is that when they've read that, they feel like they've got a sense of who you are, what you do, why they might want And that's really one of the biggest benefits. We always say a shook is a one hour conversation mm -hmm. with you and your reader. And yeah, you should write like you talk. You should share stories. These aren't meant to be sterile, you know, type books. Brocious. They're meant to be yeah. conversation starters. Ah, excellent. Okay. And so, um, how do you even get started? I mean, like if somebody's sitting here and listening to this podcast and going, that sounds like a great idea, but I've got nothing interesting to say, to say or I don't know what I would say in a book. Because I must admit, I'm sitting here personally. Um, I'm 53 years old. I think for the last 20 years, I've been thinking about writing a book. Uh, I haven't <laughs> because I just don't know where to start. I don't know. I sometimes wonder what do I really have to offer. And then I kind of mm -hmm. go, but hey, you put content out all the time. There's lots of stuff that you have to offer. I just don't know where to start. So... What would you say to people who are sitting here going, I've got no clue? Yeah. And we it's like I never hear that. I hear that all the time, Deborah. And it's it's a fair, it's a fair thing. I had it, you know, my head trash 15, whatever it was, 20 years ago, and I before I wrote my first book, like who am I to write a book? You know, mm -hmm. 19 books later. So if I always say, if you help people, which most business owners and entrepreneurs do, yep. if you're helping people with something, whether it's achieving a goal, fixing a problem, whatever it might be then there's a high probability you can and ought to write a book, a short book. And again, remember, these are highly focused. So you're not trying to teach the entire thing that you do. You slice and dice it and write multiple shows. I know we we can people can see the video, right? If yep. those watching, right? Yes. So for example, Deborah, you'll appreciate this. This is an, an elder law attorney here in Pennsylvania. 
she could have written one big book on Alzheimer's and dementia disease and how it affects you and how, you know, as a, what you, you know, what you need to do from a legal standpoint, et cetera, as uh, you're know, proceeding, your, your family member or, or even you are proceeding through that. But instead of writing one big book, she sliced and diced it into three different books. And these are, again, smaller books. So it allows her, A, to market differently. She can market each book individually because each one has a unique focus. Mm -hmm. But it also makes it more readable, more manageable. And if a book is more likely to be read, then there's a higher probability that the reader may in turn do what you ask them in the book, which is ultimately to become a customer, client, patient, et cetera. Perfect. Hey, for those who can't see the video, just uh, the book that I kind of mentioned to Mike that I always put it comes to mind for me is the Who Moved My Cheese book. It's that kind of size book where it's a, yep. a beautiful, quick, short, sharp read, has a really strong message, but it's that sort of size. Um, I'm really curious because obviously there are lots of self-publishing options out there. And so, I, you know, people could go, well, I'm just going to go and write my own book, self-publish it. What are the biggest mistakes people make when they, when they do self-publishing? Yeah, great question. Uh, I would say the first thing they don't do, Deborah, is they really don't think about their goals. Like, what are they really trying to achieve? If you're trying to become a New York Times bestseller and world-renowned expert, you know, you're going to write a different type of book than a short, helpful book, probably. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to want to get a media agent. You're going to just, you know, work with a traditional publisher. But for a lot of folks, they just want to be what I call five mile famous. They just want to be the dentist in their town that is known for whatever procedure or the, you know, insurance agent, for example. Mm -hmm. So you want to, you know, A, get over this idea that, I'm trying to like write this amazing book. Yes, it's going to be a good book. It's going to be a helpful book, but it's going to be a book about what you do, what your specialty is, should be focused. And in our program, every uh, one of our clients works directly with me. So we're brainstorming, Deborah. And I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they don't think about their goals. They think they have to, you know, come up with this amazing book that's got to be, you know, 400 pages, et cetera. And I think there really are alternatives out there that they should at least consider. Uh, for many first-time authors, a short book is a great way because you're going to make a mistake. You're going to, you know, you're going to learn. I, my first book, gosh, you know, wish I knew now what I knew, you know, know now what I knew then, or other way around. Yeah. Wish I knew then what I know now. But you know, being able to get something done quickly and get it out there working for you, learn from the mistakes, you know. I think uh, coming up with something like a shorter book is a better strategy. Yeah. And it comes back to sort of marketing 101, doesn't it, in terms of I think a lot of people, um, they get caught up in this all, oh, you should, you ought to, you need to do. Um, and they haven't really thought about why they're doing it. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And why they're doing it, who they're doing it for, what kind of results, what outcomes they want from it. So I'm guessing your team helps them work through that in terms of thinking about, yep. you know, who is it for, what outcome do you want, what's the message? Absolutely. Go, that's, yeah. the, that's the meat and potatoes before we even start, you know, there's several weeks of work before we and, and our total process is about eight to twelve weeks, mm -hmm. but several of the early on weeks are just totally you know, brainstorming, coming up with ideas. Who we you know, who are we trying to attract? I will also say, Deborah, you know, right from the get go, books are very powerful. I mean, most experts have a book. Most you know celebrities. I mean, we all, you know, there's reasons why thought leaders tend to be book authors. Um. But it's really key, Deborah, that I want to stress this. Writing a book and using it in your marketing is a long-term game. Mm -hmm. So if you think you're going to create this book and then maybe put a couple of weeks of marketing behind and it's going to change the world, chances are probably not. It's a, it's a long-term thing. It's, I always say you want to be consistent and persistent with your use because a, a well-written book can last years and produce results for years if done right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually really interesting because I know that a lot of people kind of think that you know, with a lot of things actually, so I'll just put it, you know, a website, I build a website, I put it out there and all these people actually come to it. No, they're not going to. Yeah. You've got to have some reason to do that. And I think people think with books that, you know, it's all about becoming the number one bestseller. Um, really, for most people, that's not the ultimate goal, right? No, yeah, it's not. So in terms of making money from these short, helpful books, um, you know, it's not about selling the book. So it's not because I think, again, people think, oh, I'm going to publish a, a book and it's going to be all of my expertise all crammed to this one book and I'm going to sell it and retire in the Caribbean somewhere. But <laughs> that's probably not going to happen for most people who write books. Um, but these particularly are not designed for that. So how do you make money out of writing that kind of book? Yeah. 
Again, great question. And yeah, that hasn't happened to me yet either. Uh, oh. So, but again, it's a, it's a different effort. Like yes. if you're going to try that kind of book, it's a different effort. Mm -hmm. And it's a very expensive effort, but because you need a, a pretty big team. But the way our authors make money with our short, helpful books is they are connecting their products and services, whatever it might be, to the book. So the book is about something they do, how they help their clients, patients, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And it's guiding those interested readers. It's not 100%. None of our clients have hit 100% where every reader becomes a client or customer. But you're trying to encourage those readers that get it to take what we call that next step. And that next step is typically you know, working with you in some capacity. That's where you make your money. So for example, that dentist I was sharing with earlier, the holistic natural dentist, he used his book very strategically he would put it you know, out in his community, He'd place it where other folks that are very interested in healthy, you know, healthy uh, oral health, mm -hmm. yoga studios, natural food stores, gyms. He would put free copies of his book for people to take. And within the first month of doing that, Deborah, he got three patients that he would have gotten otherwise just because his book was out there. Yeah. It resonated. And it connected the dots to him and his practice. Mm. And I think that's also another really key point is like with any marketing, um, you have to invest in it. You have to be consistent. You have to, it, um, it's not just a short, sharp, just put it out there and, and everybody will come. It's more about um, who else can you partner with? Where else can you get that information yep. out there? All those sort of things. So what kind of costs are typically involved? Um, not so much for working with you. I'll come back to that shortly, but more in terms of producing a book. Like what does a book cost these days to print? Yeah, it, it's not... It, you know, it's more than a business card, yep. but less than a lot of things. So on average for the, our books, Deborah, about a hundred pages, yep. there's, there's somewhere between three and five dollars. It depends on quantity and all that, but you're, you're spending about, th once the book is done mm -hmm. and you need to print them up, you're spending somewhere between three and five dollars a book. Okay. That seems very reasonable. Okay. And mm -hmm. so then the, tell us a little bit about the, the process. So, um, you know, I, I decide I want to write a, a short, helpful book and I come to your team. What does that look like? Yep. So as I mentioned earlier, I work with every one of our clients. Um, it's a lot of brainstorming, a lot of Zoom meetings. We have a very, you know, that engineer brain of mine <laughs> has a very developed, a very unique uh, systematic way of, taking you know the book creation process step by step. Mm -hmm. So we take them through a very systematic process, brainstorm. Now, most of our clients, Deborah, we and we encourage this, they write their own content. Mm -hmm. So we do offer ghostwriting for the, you know, the CEO who doesn't have the time, for example, <laughs> which is typically the case. Um, we are, and I know I've listened to some of your past episodes, we are looking at leveraging AI now uh, as an alternative, not as in the content creation so much, but more in the outlining and planning and, you know, coming up with good ideas for a book. Yep. But um, there's some pretty cool stuff we're doing with AI too. Yeah. I must admit, I'm, I'm really fascinated and scared by AI. I, I think it's, I'm a technology geek, so I love the opportunity that it offers. Yeah. But I was just talking yeah. to a guest yesterday about some of the, the real challenges around, you know, um, fake, fake stuff and potential um opportunities for scams and things but yeah it is it's amazing i mean like we use it in the business and just just i don't think it's ever going to replace humans but if it can take no. away a lot of the legwork that we have to do the research the um you know start i think even just starting with a yep. non-blank page because i am the worst if i have to start from a blank page i just sit there for hours kind of almost procrastinating and <laughs> and worrying about well how do i start and then you put yeah. something i mean i know chat gpt is not all of ai but if you use chat gpt you can pop something in there it gives you something you go, oh, yeah, that's really great, but now I'm going to change this, this and this. And by the time you finished, it's nothing like what AI started with, but, hey, it got me started. So I like using it as that um, that prompter, if you like. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So tell, so what what is it doing in the publishing world? What can AI do in terms of your – because I, I hear oh, yeah. you've got a very um, systematic proven process. Yep. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I haven't even kept abreast of everything, but in the book publishing world, obviously outlining and planning for the book, I guess there's still opportunities for um, people who want to, you know, quote, use AI to write the book. Yep. Um, I'm not necessarily that fan. You know, mm -hmm. I, I believe it's a, you know, more of a, a partnership, if you will, yep. versus replacing you. 
audio books, you know, there's going to be a way to put it's out there now, or you can use your own voice to now narrate your books. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the cool things I heard one of your past episodes uh, talking about this, but we're working with an AI developer now where essentially you can upload you. Let's say I could upload a couple of my books into this system and it trains the AI to be like a Mike Capuzzi chat GPT, if you will. So it's using the content I've written in my books, but then building a knowledge base that, you know, sounds like Mike is based on Mike's philosophies and teachings. So that, that to me is, that's where I'm very excited about AI is like, how can I train it to, um, you know, sound like me like you. Uh, yeah. and, and know the way I approach things. I haven't thought about all the bad things that can be done yet, but uh, from that, but right now I think it's kind of cool that we can train it and yeah. use it as a tool. It was interesting. The guest yesterday was talking about the fact that, you know, it can actually um, not only can you use it to feed all the stuff that you've written, so that it becomes um, a, a, a chat bot with, with your feelings and the way that you talk, but you can actually now even program it to use your voice, which means yeah. you could literally be creating mass messages, but personalized messages um, and almost have conver- people can have conversations with you, but you're not actually, there which is you know it's it's really interesting but also quite frightening (laughs) yes it is yep okay cool so um just i want to ask now in terms of i always ask my guests to give our listeners or three top tips or tools what are the three things that you would give to listeners if they're you know maybe thinking about writing a book even thinking because i mean one of your things is you've gone from being an employee into being an entrepreneur so for something you've learned on that journey you'd like to share just three things they can walk away with and hopefully do something with yeah, I think, I think the first thing is get any head trash out of there. Like, I can't write a book. I'm not smart enough. I'm not a good enough writer. All right? yeah. I, I just think that so many books that ought to be written and other content too, Deborah, doesn't get written because people, you know, really are their own worst enemy. So get that out of your mind. There's enough opportunities. There's enough ways and systems and, you know, philosophies on how to do a book that you can figure one out. And, uh, if, if you're helping people and you, 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 know, you want to continue to help people in different ways, a book can be a great way. So get the head trash out. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say another thing that I don't know how much I'm sure I'm, my guess is you probably do this too. I would say spend more, especially if you're in the planning of a book, for example, spend more quiet time, not on a gadget, not on chat GPT that has its time and moments, yep. but just quiet time where you're really letting your brain just kind of think, you know, how do I want, what do I want to do here? Who am I looking to serve? You know, just so I call it quiet, creative thinking time. I I think that's a, an underutilized strategy that most of hard charging entrepreneurs just don't give themselves the time to do that just to be quiet. Yeah. We think we call it a clarity break and it it really is Mm. very much about, um, you know, I, I bought myself a remarkable specifically for this reason, because I do love technology. Um, but if I have anything that pops up with, you know, Oh, you've got a notification. That's it. I'm completely often distracted. And so (laughs) (laughs) the remarkable gives me the opportunity to, to write on a notepad. And I just literally take that somewhere into nature away from everything else, turn everything off. And even if you don't, don't have any questions to ask of yourself just forcing yourself to sit there silently with a blank piece of paper can be really helpful but even better if you can see it and go actually yeah okay what do I want to achieve how you know ask yourself some meaningful questions and just get it out get it out of your head see what comes out you'd be quite yep. surprised yep. yeah yeah perfect absolutely and then uh, I think that was to the third one yep um, actually if you like what we've talked about I'm going to share at the end I, I've written a book called the magic of short books yes. Deborah which outlines in great detail our formula mm-hmm. it's on Amazon I'm going to give your listeners a chance to read it for free but um, it's it's a it's it's a recipe for a short helpful book I would definitely encourage people to at least check it out and see if that kind of book could work for you. Fantastic. Okay. So that was, you're going to give us a link to that at the moment. Um, so what kind of people do you enjoy working with? Like what are the, what's your favorite client look like? Uh, that's a, another great question. The ones I work with, I love working with, and you sound like, like you would even be like, I love people that get marketing, yeah. that love marketing, right? And that are always looking at marketing, both old school marketing, like direct response, it doesn't just have to be digital, but copywriting and all that stuff. I just love students of marketing mm-hmm. because, you know, as you and I both know, marketing is, you know, the lifeblood of any business, um, the kind of stuff that you and I talk about. Yeah. So I think a marketing-oriented business owner. And then 
just someone who's just passionate about helping before selling. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what a book does, right? A book helps before it sells, at least a shook should. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think there's a whole philosophy there about trying to help people before you even worry about money exchange. So those, those are the people I, they tend to be more forward thinking and longer term vision. And I like that kind of person. Perfect. And so if they wanted to get in contact with you, how would they do that, Mike? Yeah. Well, um, my main site is MikeCapuzzi.com. Mm -hmm. um, our publishing business is Bite Sized Books with a D, BiteSizedBooks.com. Mm -hmm. And Deborah, we have a I have a podcast, I'm almost four years old, and that's called The Author Factor. So AuthorFactor.com, and I interview nonfiction book authors just to hear and share their stories and challenges of how they finally wrote that first book. Um, and then I, I do have a gift for your listeners. Yes, uh, if I can share yes that. please do do go and ahead. And I know, I know only certain people can see it, but. Here's three of our short books. Um, I mentioned The Magic of Short Books. Mm -hmm. That's a great little book. There's The Magic of Working Together. And then The Magic of Gratitude is a little gift book I put together. All three of those, Deborah, um, we put a, they're in digital format. You can read them online. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to MikeCapuzzi.com forward slash magic, it's a hidden link. Mm -hmm. um, just let me know you heard me on Deborah's podcast. We'll email you links for all three of those shooks. Oh, that is wonderful. Hey, thank you so much. Um, I think it's a really great idea. And I think it's really, I think the first thing is probably the biggest thing for me is like get that head trash out there. Um, you know, just just do it. I know that when, I mean, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I've been creating content for a long, 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 long time. Um, but it was difficult when you started because it's like, what do I have to say? I remember some when I was first asked to be a business mentor and I said to them, but I don't understand what <laughs> I have to offer. And they went, hold on a second, Deborah. You know, you've, you've run businesses your entire life. You've had successes you've had failures you've got a huge amount to offer it's like oh okay and then once I started doing it I realized how much I loved it and I think the same with content I think we have this this stuff going on in our head that's like well what, but what do I have that is Im important or mm -hmm. helpful um but you'd be surprised I mean sometimes you share things that you you know you know um which means you think everybody knows it and yet they don't and so you share it and I'm always quite surprised by some of the things you can share and people go ah that was amazing I've, I've that really changed something for me so get it get out of that head trash get on with it get yourself writing a book um and if you need some help you know talk to mike and the team i think they'd be great to work with deborah thank you very much i do appreciate that oh no I'm, I'm, it's been a great it's a pleasure to talk to you it's been really fun um i look forward to keeping in contact and please do come to new zealand i think i'm now i'm trying to convince all my <laughs> podcast guests that they need to come here um and I share a little story because I was actually, I came to Dallas back in January for, our, oh no, hmm. in February for our EOS conference. Um, and I was on the, they have like a bus that goes from Dallas airport out to uh, where I was, or from the airport to where we were actually holding the conference. And I was on the bus and somebody said to me, oh, where are you from? I said, I'm from Auckland. They're like, oh, wow, that's, um, New Zealand's a beautiful place. I'd really love to go there. And I said to them, look, it said, well, she, she, she said, it's a long way to go. And I said, if <laughs> I can come here for a day and a half conference, I'm pretty certain you can come to New Zealand for a two to yeah. three week holiday. So that's my kind of desperate plea to people is please do come visit New Zealand. I know it's a long way away, but it seriously is one of the best countries in the world. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, it's definitely on the bucket list. Trust me. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, look, Mike, thank you so much for your time um, on a Friday afternoon. You enjoy the rest of your weekend and I look forward to staying in contact. Deborah, thank you very much. Thank you.